For this video, I will actually be covering two games, which are Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk, and its sequel, Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk. Did I say that enough times? Both games are single-player psychological horror visual novels developed by Nikita Krukov and published by Missing Calm. The first game was published on Steam for PC in August 2020, while the sequel was published in December 2021, along with both games being ported to Nintendo Switch by Forever Entertainment in 2022. Both games received overwhelmingly positive reviews, with people mostly saying they either felt sympathetic towards the character or that the main character's struggles are relatable to them in some way because because of the accurate depiction of her mental illness. Both games are about one unnamed girl suffering from what appears to be a severe trauma and psychosis, and the player acts as a distinct subconscious from the girl of whom she interacts with, even stating that her communications with the player make her feel like a character in a visual novel. The first game has the player carefully guiding the protagonist to the store to buy bagged milk and return home while listening to her thought processes. The second game takes place immediately after the first, where the girl is home with her obscenely monstrous mother, or rather that's how the girl's delusions portray her to be, but most of the game has the girl cooped up in her room sharing stories or commenting with the player. Depending on what the player interacts with in the environment and how the player responds to the girl, different endings can be triggered. As a friendly reminder, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you're interested in seeing the playthroughs first before viewing this analysis, check out my gameplay videos where I cover both games from start to finish. Lastly, before I get started, if you do enjoy this video, make sure Sure to click the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Now it's time for the analysis. Since the main character is nameless, I will be referring to her as Milk Chan since that's the apparent nickname widely used by the online community. I will also shorten both game titles by referring to the first one as Milk Inside and the second as Milk Outside. Both games have a relatively straightforward plot as I implied earlier. Milk Chan braves the outdoors to buy a bag of milk, return home, and sulk in her room all the while interacting with the separate subconscious entity that is the player. Milk Inside takes about 15 to 20 minutes to play and only involves two possible endings. The bad ending is achieved when the player is mean enough times towards Milk Chan or presses her too hard to talk about her past, which results in her confronting the player with not being helpful. I can't say whether this other ending is necessarily good, but the canon ending has the player successfully leading Milk Chan back home only to be confronted by her mother who is depicted as this cold, monstrous entity. She is told to go to bed and the game ends there. Milk Outside can take about two hours to complete if you also throw in pursuing all of the possible endings, which more or less involve Milk Chan experiencing a disturbing nightmare that reveals some aspect of her struggle with mental illness. Part of the game also adapts a point-and-click adventure as the player is given the ability to search Milk Chan's room and either elicit her commentary about certain items or discover hidden imaginary fireflies. The ending is affected by the player selecting certain choices to say to Milk Chan, interacting with certain items, and collecting a certain amount of fireflies. I'll be mostly analyzing Milk Chan for this video, but I'll also briefly touch on her mother as well as what the player really represents in the game. In the first game, Milk Chan reveals to us that a horrific tragedy occurred in her family life which was the death of her father after he jumped out of the window of their apartment and lay mangled on the ground below, which Milk Chan may have witnessed. Milk Chan since then only sees the world in shades of black and red splotches, but there are other interesting tidbits to note here so let me start with the first game. In Milk Inside, Milk Chan's goal is to buy milk and go home. Once she's home, however, her mother's conversation with her kind of implies that she's dissatisfied with her daughter buying the milk. She tells her to go inside and orders her to her room. It could be that she took too long buying the milk. After all, we're initially introduced as the protagonist's subconscious so we can see the girl trying to build the courage to go to and from the supermarket, but during her journey we can observe behavior that's similar to obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. OCD is pretty much when an individual feels the need to compulsively perform 
perform a certain task, and it ends up intruding on their life somehow. So Milk Chan can be seen retracing her footsteps because she walked wrong in her eyes. But back to the milk dilemma. I don't think her mother was upset because she took a long time buying milk. I share my sentiments with others who think that she's actually severely allergic to milk. That was a possible theory we can conclude from just the first game, but we get some more clarification at the start of Milk Outside. Milk Chan goes to her room, but then during a delusion, she rushes back to the kitchen to check on the milk. That's where her mother reappears and demands that she never ever drink milk again as she is injecting something into her daughter's arm. Because we're seeing this from the point of view of the main character, we don't know what the mother is injecting. But after taking into account the daughter's delusions and the fact that she bought milk even though the mother is making her promise not to drink it, we can infer that the protagonist is allergic to milk and her mother is injecting her with an EpiPen because she might have just drank some earlier and had an allergic reaction. If we accept that hypothesis, then it's possible that her mother in reality is just trying to care for her and is maybe expressing frustration over her daughter's compulsive behavior of buying and drinking milk despite her allergy as well as her mental illness perpetuating this behavior. Unfortunately, that's not what the protagonist sees since she is convinced that her mother is a monster. Here's where the story can feel darker. Milk Chan makes a comment in Milk Outside about how she was dragged out of school by her dad and that day he had also bought milk. She then mentions how she hated her dad, hated that he bought milk, and hated that her mother wasn't home. I could be stretching here, but I've seen others make this claim. With the strong implications that Milk Chan was already suffering from severe mental illness in the past, with her inability to feel like she could fit in, her delusional thoughts, and sudden tantrums, it's possible that her father was fed up with dealing with her, so he bought milk to try and force her to drink it to elicit a severe and fatal allergic reaction. Afterwards, he jumps out of their window and ends his own life. If the player triggers the first death, which is the strangulation scene in Milk Outside, we can see a strong implication that this is what the father was trying to do to her. Milk Chan's mother wasn't present at the time, which she makes a point to mention, so she could have subconsciously projected that blame onto her mother. It could be why her delusions paint her as this monster and why in Milk in Inside, she tells the cashier that she ought to get home before her mother throws her out of the window. That's not even all of what she's been through. By interacting with the laptop in Milk Outside, the protagonist also gives insight into how she was cyberbullied after opening up to an internet friend about her struggles with mental illness. Milk Chan is sadly misunderstood by everyone around her and her past family tragedies only add to her mental suffering. Before I get to covering the endings though, I want to touch on who we are as the player. In Milk Inside, we're initially led to believe we are Milk Chan's inner conscious that's also distinct enough to influence her behavior in a positive or negative way. If in the game the player elects to be mean or presses the protagonist about her past, the end screen shows her eyes with the caption, I guess, insert your name, didn't help me at all. We also see references to how the player interacts with Milk Chan with respect to her medication, so it seems likely that we as the player are actually the manifestation of the medication's effects. It took both games to make that realization for me, but I felt it was a unique take on the game's narrative perspective. There are five possible dreams that Milk Chan could have, which depend on how successfully the player interacts with the environment. The four deciding factors are whether the first death occurred, which is the strangulation scene, whether the second death occurred, which is the falling scene, the number of fireflies the player discovers, and whether the cell phone was picked up during the search. Each dream is a reflection of Milk Chan's struggles in her life, which are her fear of loneliness, her feeling of helplessness, her low self-esteem, and her self-awareness of how others view her. Each dream concludes in the same way, where Milk Chan abruptly wakes up, but in a way it's a relief to her because she'd been suffering from insomnia for the whole week, so at least she was able to sleep long enough to have these intense dreams, even though they were nightmares. These two games were among the most influential for me in starting this channel, so I was really excited to play it and do some more research on it for this video. I find it interesting to see the representation of mental illness in the video game medium, and I hope to see more accurate representation to build both awareness and empathy, because at the end of the day, what Milk Chan experiences on a daily basis is something many people experience on a daily basis. So the unique immersiveness of video games can help bridge that gap and create more understanding. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything you feel I've missed from a psychological analysis perspective, please let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to hear your take on the subject. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next game.